Hey everybody, welcome back to Let's Play Paper Mario. We're gonna continue on down this road. Um, if you talk to that sign, the mushroom will actually turn around and do a Goomba, which I don't feel like fighting right now. Goomba King's Fortress set. the heck? The ceiling's all glitching out inside that castle. No, oh, it's just another glitch of the virtual console. What's that stomping? Ah. Uh, what happened to him? His eyes are all googly. That must be the Goomba King, so... Here we go. Okay, here we go. This is the first actual boss of the game. Oh my god, an actual boss, one that's not fixed. Um, okay. So let me explain uh, this fight. The Goomba King has 10 HP, he has one attack, but he also has an alternate attack um, where he can bring down like a bunch of nuts from the tree above. But he can only use this attack once, so he's not really that hard. Plus you can hit the tree behind him and it'll uh, cause the nut above him to fall and do some damage to him, as well as, uh, the two behind him. So you do this, bam, bam, bam. And both them go down, and it just leaves the king. Power to begin. And he's already dead. That was easy. <laughs> um, okay, uh... Okay, so, examine this, and hit the switch. Then, everything will start rumbling! They just like, put some random debris up there. I just, I didn't actually notice like those random rocks that come out from the ceiling. You know, how in the world did he actually get up there? Huh? There's I don't know how you would actually get up there to the top of that tower. Okay, I'm down this down here, and you can hit this a block up here, and this will give you a super shroom. Basically, the same as a mushroom, except it heals 10 HP instead of just five. And we're already at the end of the, um, prologue. This is, uh, something known as the after chapter interlude. Basically, at the end of every single chapter, you'll go into one of these little scenes where it goes up to Bowser's castle, and Peach's castle, and it'll do some kind of cutscene, usually telling you where to go next. Actually, I'm pretty sure it'll tell you pretty much every single time. Except that you'll get some... Sometimes you'll get some interesting stuff out of this. So apparently, Bowser was the one who... made the uh, uh, Goomba King strong. And if he considers that strong, I don't know what he... I don't want to know what he was like before. 
If that was considered strong, he must have been pathetic normally, like weaker than a normal Goomba. And here comes some of the coolest characters in the game, and everybody should agree. Meet the Ninja Turtles! Yes, the Koopa Bros. They're basically a knockoff of the Ninja Turtles, and if you can't see how, you're stupid. These guys are just awesome, because I mean, not only are they like the Ninja Turtles, they act like them too, in a way. Except they just don't yell out Cowabunga and eat pizza. But in just the general way of, like, how they talk and everything, it's like, it's like the Ninja Turtles. Though, it is kind of sad that you don't see him outside of this game. And I really wish they would bring these guys back. It's just really stupid. I wonder how like, these guys would be in other games. Because their full potential isn't quite used in this game. There could be a lot more they could do. Okay, so that was the interlude, and now we're gonna continue on. Uh, come down here and hit this, and you'll get a random sleepy sheet that puts enemies on the field to sleep, if you couldn't guess. Hit the tree, bring down a spring, bounce up, talking really fast, open up a chest, get a badge, the hammer throw. Equipping that allows you um, to use your hammer on any enemy. This is a small counter to that little... Uh, up and high and low elevation thing, it allows you to hit, use your air hammer on anybody on the field, whether they're on the third ele whether on the fir first, second, or the third elevation, as I pretty much spoiled. There's, yeah, there is a third elevation, which is the most frustrating to handle. Third elevation is when an enemy is on the ceiling, which you'll most commonly see with bats and other enemies, which don't re- the third elevation doesn't actually appear very often. Very few enemies have it. But yeah, basically, with the third elevation, you have to use either um, a move that hits all enemies that are on the ground, like an earthquake move, because that surprisingly enough actually works, or shot type moves, as I would call them, like the hammer throw. You throw it, or other moves where you like shoot something or throw something at them. But something like the jump would not work, because you can't jump above. You can't jump on top of people that are on the ceiling. It can't be done. Though for some reason there's a character in Thousand Year Door that can jump on enemies uh, when they're on the ceiling. I don't get how that works. I really want to know the logic behind that. Oh, wait. If you go down, um, you'll find the shop that sells the, uh, that sells things to you for these. Most of them are pretty... Most of the good ones are really expensive. Like, there's one that costs about... Uh... I think it was 25. That's, like, a really good one. And it's one I get every playthrough. Though, most of them will range somewhere between... Uh, 3 and 5... 3 and 10. Okay. So here we get into into a cutscene with uh, the seven stars. Which they'll pr they're pretty much just explaining the whole backstory of Bowser taking the star raw and what their purpose is and everything. It's it's just the story, which I know a lot of people don't care about the story. Everybody just complains about the graphics, because graphics make the entire game. Note my extreme amount of sarcasm. Okay, I think this is probably the only time where you... Where it uh, does one of these little interludes, not between a chapter. It's doing the. Well, actually, technically, this is still not a chapter yet. So I guess it. But this isn't an after chapter interlude. It's a uh, between chapter changing. I, 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 I don't know. 
But I think this is pretty much the only time it uh, does this cutscene, not after a chapter. Which most, which pretty much every single time the interlude will start when um, you get the star. So basically, you collect the star. He goes, "Oh yay, I got the star!" And then it comes to here. Does the same thing in the other two Paper Mario's. Except there's one uh, interlude that's a little different. Um, so this little guy here is a uh, Twink. He's just a star. For the longest time, I called this guy Tink. I don't know why. He's obviously Twink. But for the longest time, I called him Tink because I wasn't reading the text properly. Because I'm an idiot like that. And I always read text wrong. Alright, so he's pretty much just gonna go down and deliver us something. He's gonna deliver us the lucky charm that uh, she just gave him. The lucky charm is that item I told you about that lets you use action commands. So once we get that, then this LP will really kick it. And then it'll start getting interesting. Because this is so far being really boring. And he has to come down and just land on her head perfectly. No, I don't need to know the tutorial. It just tells you how to use them, like always. And here we have to fight a random magic Koopa just to test our abilities to use the action commands. Now, I must have been an idiot when I first played this as a kid, because in the tutorial it tells you, of course, how to use the action commands with attacks. But one other thing it tells you that for some reason I didn't know until I played the game again when I was much older. Um, we'll see that here in a minute. Basically, I'm just gonna do some damage. See? Um, now, if you remember, I said that the jump does two hits. I'm not, it's not true for the power attacks. It only does one hit, even if it's a jump. Here is what the double hit looks like. You basically bounce on twice, uh, just spreading out the damage. Oh, man. Um, I tried to do the little, uh, thing there. I'm gonna try to... I'm gonna try to let him live and see if I can do it. There! That is what the other command is that I didn't know about for the longest time for some stupid reason. Basically, if you hit the A button right when you get hit with an attack, you'll guard. And when you guard, it'll decrease the damage you take by one. There's also um, a badge you can get that increases the power of your defense and the power of your guard. So basically, it'll decrease the amount of damage even more, but this item doesn't cost as much as a defense up. So it's really, really useful if you can block. Though, take note that blocking isn't always good, because there are some attacks in the game that are dang near impossible to guard, and I'm sure a lot of people know what some of the attacks are, because... The problem is, you can really only block physical attacks and some specials, but some of the really advanced spell attacks, like lightning bolts and stuff like that, are dang near impossible to block, and really, you're lucky if you can block them. Anyway, I think uh, I'm running up to 15 minutes. I don't feel like doing half an hour recording sessions. So, I'm gonna save right here and uh, end this part. Okay, uh, see you next time.